Hi everyone and welcome to the new video about control systems topics and we will continue with the Nyquist diagram or Nyquist criterion to calculate several uh, parameters. So we have the following plant given GS is placed in the feedback configuration as shown below. So we have the plant and this is the proportional control with its gain K and we have the unity gain feedback and the transfer function of our plant open loop transfer function is shown here. It is as shown here, it is a second order term times the first order term in the denominator. So in effect, it is a third order system. The loop gain will be of course a third order system because your gain will not change your order of your system, total system. So what we have is the following questions. Using the Nyquist criterion, calculate the range of the proportional controller gain K for stability, B for the instability, and for measuring instability, so you have three stability cases and the oscillation frequency, which is linked to the marginal stability. Now, as we did in the previous videos, we will start with the loop transfer function or the loop gain and then continue with our analysis. So let's start with that. So loop gain, which is the L of S in Laplace domain, so that will be K times G of S. And if you work it out, you will get A times K divided by S squared plus 4S plus 5 times S plus 2. Since we know that we're working with the sinusoidal uh, analysis or sinusoidal signals, we will set the S equal to J omega. So we will have a steady state situation. So S is equal to J omega. So we will set this. So set s equal to j omega what you get is then the following loop uh, transfer function l j omega will be 8 times k still divided by j omega quantity squared plus j 4 omega plus 5 that's the first term the second order term and then j omega plus 2 that's actually for the loop transfer function shown in j omega domain now, you can of course simplify this, uh, you will get the j omega times j omega will be minus omega squared, you will have, that will be just pure real uh, element, and you have a 5 here, so 5 minus the omega squared will be the real part in this uh, term, and you have the j omega times 4 or j omega, 4 omega is the imaginary part. Of course, you have uh, an imaginary real part here. So if you work it out and also work out the parentheses, you will get in a simplified form. So I will place it here. So I will leave out the details, which is just simple elementary math, just working out the parentheses. What you get is in total, and in fact, you will get 10 minus 6 omega squared, and then plus, that's your real part, first one, and then j omega, times 30 minus omega squared and that is your real part okay that's actually what is shown here you can convert this in a different form which is sometimes handy to use and i will do that what we do is the following you will take the complex conjugate of your denominator this and you will multiply the numerator and the denominator by that expression show what is the complex conjugate of a of a of an expression the complex conjugate of an expression is actually the same expression with the imaginary side with the opposite sign so if this is a plus you will get a minus sign here and the real part is unchanged so what you have if i now do that i will place the eight times k in front so we will have in the numerator six minus omega or six i mean ten minus six times omega squared or just the real part this will be minus omega and then 13 minus omega squared so that's actually because of the complex conjugate if you now multiply this term with that term so this term of the denominator with the complex conjugate part of that one you will recognize that only the real part will be uh, squared and also the imaginary part will be squared that's only what what will be left over so you will have 10 minus 6 squared 10 minus 6 omega squared squared and then plus omega squared times 13 minus 
omega squared squared. So you will, as you can see, this real part will be in total squared and this imaginary part will be in total squared. So you will get this expression. Now, for analysis of the Nyquist uh, stability criterion, we will first start with letting, so let k is equal to 1. And then we will uh, see later on what, what, what values of k will uh, produce a stable system or unstable system or etc. So if I now look at the situation for at specific key parameters or key points, which is, for example, at zero radians per second, what we have, what kind of uh, expression, what kind of result do we get? So if I substitute here in the zero, what we, what we have is the following. Of course, with k is equal to one, you will have the following. So I will do that in blue. You will have, this will, of course, disappear, and this will also disappear. So you will get eight times 10 divided by 10 squared. So I will do that in a separate step. So you will get 10 divided by 10 squared because you will, you, you will uh, lose a lot of omegas. This will result in 0 0.8. As you can see, we, of course, we can determine the magnitude expression of this one. That will be, of course, a little bit uh, more work. But you already can see that the expression just substituted omega is zero will produce already a real part. So this is already your gain for zero radians per second. That's already what you have. What you next do, that's actually the first point. Let me do that in black. So the second point or second key parameter or key analysis is set your imaginary. So set the Imagine so imaginary part of L J omega equal to zero. You might ask why you do that. Why? What is the? What is? What, why is that necessary? If you place the imaginary part equal to zero, if you make that equal to zero, you will get a phase shift of one hundred. Or minus 180 degrees. Why we need that? As you remember from the Nyquist plot and also the diagram which we discussed uh, in the previous uh, example, and also with the gain margin and the phase margin. For a gain margin expression, we will look at the phase of the loop gain, which is at minus 180 degrees, and we will use that frequency to calculate the additional allowed gain. So that's what why we need. To look at the situation for an imaginary part is equal to zero. So if you make the imaginary part again in summary equal to zero, you will have a phase shift of minus 180 degrees. So if I just write it down, this will result in a phase which is not written down here explicitly, but you will get a minus 180 degrees. And this will of course happen if you make this part zero or complete that part zero. So if I write it down. So omega times 13 minus omega squared, I will, will need to make that zero. If you do the math here, you will of course get omega zero and this part must be zero. So omega zero is not really interesting. So we will have omega is equal to square root of 13 radians per second. Of course, you can simplify this or I mean uh, approximate this so you will get Omega is approximately 3.61, approximately, radians per second. Okay, so that's actually what we have now for this situation, radians per second. What do we do next? Now, we have now two situations. We have the gain at zero radians per second, which is also the phase is there zero. So if you do the math here, you can see that the phase will be also zero. Now we know also the frequency where the phase is, mi is minus 180 degrees. The next uh, step uh, I will carry out is I will substitute this value of my frequency for omega is equal to 3.61. 
and substitute it in the expression of the loop gain and I will see what the value of your real part will be. The imaginary part will of course disappear because we have set the imaginary part equal to zero. So if you make the imaginary part zero, you will of course get the square root of 13 and if you substitute it back, you will of course lose your imaginary part. So it's not really surprised that you'll leave get on the real part. So if I do the math here, just set or substitute substitute omega as the square root of 13 in the loop transfer function, what you get is You will, of course, again have a k times 1, just, just of course your k is equal to 1, we will set that. And then you will have this 0, that part will be 0, because the 30 minus square root of 13 squared, so that's all 0. And you will have 10 minus 6 times 13 minus 0, so I will do that explicitly. It's 10 minus 6 times 13 minus j0, just to emphasize that the real part is gone. And we have the 10 minus 6 times 13 squared. And you have here the 0 for the next part. Okay, if you now work this out, just substitute the values of your calculator, you will have a value which is in exact form minus 2 divided by 17. And if you approximate this, it will be minus 0.1. 118 approximately. Now, what we need to know, what was the required uh, situation for A, stability. And this is actually your gain at this specific frequency where the phase is minus 108 degrees. This is actually the following, you know, actually know your gain margin. So your gain margin, let me write it down. So gain margin is the minus of this value, of course, in dBs. Or you can also say gain margin in just as a vector is 1 over 0.118, which is 8.5. So that means actually the following. You have a headroom or you have a safety of 8.5 as a gain for your for your proportional controller gain. If you make it larger than this one, you will of course have an instable system. If you make it exactly this, you will have a marginal stable system. If you make it less than this one, you will have a stable system. So we already have uh, answered these three uh, questions here. So if high, let me do it here, stable system. So it is stable. So this for question A, it is stable. And for question B, it is instable. Let me first do this table. So what we have, you will of course need your value of K, which is less than 8.5. Okay. Okay, that's actually for the first situation. And for the second one, for your unstable situation, so for unstable, then your K will be larger than 8.5. And if you want a marginal stable system, so marginal stable, then your k is equal to exactly 8.5. So what is then the oscillation frequency? So oscillation frequency Now we have determined of course this value of omega for a specific phase and that resulted in a gain of 8.5 which is what we uh, allowed to add. So at this frequency, that is actually what you get. So if I make my gain 8.5 exactly, and I reach this frequency, that will be my oscillation frequency. 
That means actually your oscillation frequency, I will denote it as omega oscillation, will be the square root of 13 radians per second. So you will actually get that directly from your analysis of your phase by setting the imaginary part equal to zero. Okay, that's actually now for this exercise. So as you can see, we have first again the term determine the loop gain. From that, we have set that equal to k to zero, and then determined a couple of key parameters. That is really interesting to move on with your calculation. So you have the uh, situation for 0 0.8 and then for the imaginary part you will see that this will be the case for the frequency and that will result in a gain of 8.5 as a gain margin. If you of course make a drawing of this so we can make a sketch. So let's make a sketch. So Nyquist diagram, this is just of course a sketch, it's not to scale. So I will have this, the real part of my loop gain, and this is the imaginary part of my loop gain. I will have, I will start at 0 0.8 here, and I will move and make a, uh, make a plot in this form using three quadrants because I have a third order system. And this one, as we already discussed, I'm, I'm crossing this at frequency square root of 13. And the value of that is minus 2 divided by 17. So this will be minus 2 divided by 17. And this is happening at omega is equal to square root of 13 radians per second. And this is at omega is equal to zero. If you now blow it up, so you will make your k is equal to exactly 8.5, you will get another plot. So you will have this, so you will start for a little bit larger because you have now added 8.5 to your gain and it will again circle this and you will have a situation like this and you will come again at that same end point. End point. But now, the difference between this and the uh, the red curve is that you have here, I will do it in black, you will have now encircled here the minus one. That's actually the border, which is actually the mar marginal stability. And this point is still omega is equal to square root of 13. That's still the same. And this one is still omega is zero. But the value of this, so the real part here is 0 0.8, I will do that in black. So 0 0.8 times the value of your k for marginal stability, which is 8.5. So you will get 0 0.8 times 8.5, which is 6.8. And of course, then by increasing the frequency, you will of course change your magnitude of this line and also the phase, and you will reach a phase of 100 minus 180 degrees. If you look at the blue line, and a gain of exactly one, which is just at the edge of stability. If you make it larger, this will, of course, uh, will be larger, so you will encircle this minus one at the left side of this, uh, of this minus one uh, point, which will make the system unstable. If you are at the right side, it will be stable. And of course, you will end at the same uh, end point for the third order system. Okay, this, for, this was for the Nyquist diagram by considering the stability, instability, and also instability, and also the uh, marginal stability, and also the frequency of, of oscillation. So as you can see, we have again used the loop transfer function for carrying out the calculations. If you have questions or comments, or you want to discuss a, another topic, or you have suggestions, please leave it in the comment section. I will try to consider that as soon as possible.